Three Paths to Cosmic Consciousness Extracts from Lectures by Paramahansa Yogananda February 9th, 1939 So long as even a little tremor of thought and mental restlessness is present, you cannot reach cosmic consciousness. The self-realization technique of concentration helps greatly to improve the quality and power of one's concentration. Its practice will save the earnest seeker from years of fruitless wandering on the subconscious plane. That land you want to avoid it is full of illusory and imaginative spiritual experiences. One must reach the superconscious state to have real spiritual experiences and realizations of truth. The world has a habit of teaching and little practicing. You may hear a lecture on sugar a hundred times but you will not know its flavor until you have tasted it. Neither can the glory of any true teaching be known except by practice. You have to live the teachings of the prophets and the great ones. Then their truths become your own, and you realize that truth is demonstrable and universal. When you practice truth, whether you call yourself a Christian, a Hindu, a Buddhist, or a devotee of any other religion, Christ will claim you. And so will Krishna, Buddha, and all other divine incarnations of truth. Follow the path of truth steadfastly. Remember that out of thousands, only a few seek God. And out of those seekers, perhaps only one really knows him. He who is persistent will realize God. So try your best to make meditation a regular experience in your life. May you never forget God and never be satisfied until you have Him. Be able to say, Behind this finite frame, I feel the infinite. I never come to class until I know He is with me. I never teach unless I have made that complete communion. And I know that when I talk, from that plane, students will not forget what they have learned. Concentration, a requisite for finding God. To be able to concentrate is essential for spiritual progress. Without concentration, you shall never find God. Learn how to shut out of your consciousness all sounds and other earthly distractions. As soon as your consciousness is right, God is there. He isn't hiding from you. You are hiding from Him. When in deep meditation you see any inner light, try to hold it and to feel you are inside it one with it. That is where God is. Try to realize you are that light of God. The more peace you feel during concentration, and the longer you concentrate, the deeper you will go in God. If the time given to reading books about spiritual truth were spent in meditation, 
you would have far greater advancement both mentally and spiritually. Sleep less and give more hours to meditation. The rest you will enjoy is a hundred times more refreshing than sleep. Unless you can cut off sounds from your consciousness, you cannot reach God. That is why saints have sought the seclusion of caves and forests. Plunge into the inner silence again and again by practicing the methods of concentration and meditation I have given you, and you will find great peace and happiness. The Gita says, free from ever hoping desires and from cravings for possessions, with the heart waves of feeling, controlled by the soul, by yoga concentration, retiring alone to a quiet place, though yogi should constantly try to unite with the soul. The silence of deep meditation should be practiced more in all churches and temples. Everyone should talk less. During my Hermitage training in India, my guru, Swami Sri Yukteswar, would lecture to us only once in a while. Most of the time we sat around him without any talking and concentrated within. If we ever stirred, he would reprove us. A real teacher possesses more than book knowledge, and in spiritual life it is necessary to learn wisdom from such a teacher, one who knows and knows that he knows because he has experienced, not merely read about, truth. The Invisible Source of Visible Worlds Space is divided into two parts or aspects. On one side of space is creation. On the other side is God alone. Creation is completely absent. That is the world of the darkless dark and the lightless light. In the Gita, the Lord says, where no sun or moon or fire shines, that is my supreme abode. The same duality is true of human consciousness. Your being has two sides, one visible, the other invisible. With open eyes you behold objective creation and yourself in it. With closed eyes, you see nothing, a dark void. Yet your consciousness, even when disassociated from form, is still keenly aware and operative. If in deep meditation you penetrate the darkness behind closed eyes, you behold the light from which all creation emerges. By deeper samadhi, your experience transcends even the manifested light and enters the all-blissful consciousness beyond all form, yet infinitely more real, tangible, and joyous than any sensory or supersensory perception. God has given you the opportunity to observe in your own consciousness 
the operation of the same laws that govern the universe. The state of consciousness without form that is experienced with closed eyes may be compared to the endless region of darkless dark and lightless light, where God exists without any of the forms, qualities, and dualities that characterize the sphere of his material creation. In this boundless stretch of eternity behind creation, God alone lives in the unqualified consciousness of ever-existing, ever-conscious, ever-new bliss. No world or any other created thing exists in his consciousness in that part of infinity where he reigns as the Absolute. But on the other side of space, he is aware of everything, all creation, in himself. In the invisible is the factory of the universe. Einstein said that space looks very suspicious because everything comes out of it and everything disappears into it. Whither do electrons vanish and whole worlds? Anytime you become fascinated by some material creation, close your eyes. Look within and contemplate its source. You see nothing, feel nothing. Yet all visible objects have come out of that invisible. The light shineth in darkness. If you keep peering into the darkness, you will find that great light. Behind the darkness is the Christ Consciousness. Behind the darkness is the teeming life of other worlds. In my Father's house are many mansions. Right behind space is intelligence, and right behind you is God. Live no longer in ignorance of His presence. Turn the darkness with your meditation. Don't stop until you find him. There is so much to know, so much to see within. The answer to every problem will come to you straight from the infinite. The truths that I perceive within my meditation reveal the basis of psychological laws that science is discovering by other methods. When I close my eyes, I can see the subtle life currents flowing in my body. In the quietness you experience when your eyes are closed. Don't feel you are alone. God is with you. Why should you think he is not? The ether is filled with music that is caught by the radio. Music that otherwise you would not know about. And so it is with God. He is with you every minute of your existence. Yet the only way to realize this is to meditate. And those of you who do meditate should go deeper. Don't fall asleep at night until you can actually feel some expression of the presence of God within you. P. 
peer into that darkness until you discover its wondrous secrets. For your encouragement, I tell you of an experience I had today in the superconscious state. I was sitting in the library at Mount Washington. It was about four o'clock. Suddenly, my breath disappeared. My limbs became rigid. I found myself watching the process of death. Breath and movement had left my body, yet I was conscious. This experience of death was wonderful. I saw my body and all nature as a cosmic motion picture created from God's light. Joyously I cried, There is no death, Lord! This whole world is nothing but a movie. A ruler on his throne may say, Ah, I am a king. But let death give one knock and he is gone. He is a real king who feels God in all forms in creation. Death shall not frighten him because he beholds it as a portal to the divine kingdom. The First Path to Cosmic Consciousness Of the three ways to expand human consciousness into cosmic consciousness, the first is the social way, wherein you shut out self and live for all. Be loyal to all your friends and feel love for everyone. God gave you a family that you might expand your consciousness by caring and doing for others. In family life, we learn love and self-sacrifice for our loved ones and thus attain some expansion of consciousness. But this is not enough. Love that becomes personal is exclusive, confined. When love becomes impersonal, it expands. Develop impersonal love. Be able to give everyone the same love that you bestow on your family and do to for others exactly as you would for yourself. The social way to cosmic consciousness is to behave toward everyone in this way. God loves all his children alike. They are all his divine family and his love is impersonal. His children should give that same kind of love to one another. This is the divine plan. To forget it is to suffer. The whole world's attitude should change. You are everyone because your true nature is omnipresence. I enjoy giving things to others. I feel the greatest happiness in seeing their joy. When we feel for and love others, we find that all we find that all of creation responds to us. Jesus, who gave up his body as a ransom for many, showed us the social way of attaining cosmic consciousness. Christ-like, you too should serve all men as yourself. The man of cosmic consciousness is a happy man. He doesn't limit his love to a few, excluding everyone else. So should you make the whole world your own family, 
Will you remember? This consciousness is with me every moment. I have no caste, no country. I feel that all are mine. Love all men as your brothers. Love all women as your sisters. And all older people as your parents. Love all human beings as your friends. The second path. The second way to cosmic consciousness is the way of self-discipline. Do not be a victim of immoderation. Enjoy things, but don't be attached to them. Be free. Be pleasant and self-controlled. Avoid becoming a slave to wrong habits and act only according to your righteous convictions. To attain cosmic consciousness, it is necessary to possess self-control and to rise above dualities, heat and cold, pleasure and sorrow, health and sickness. Learn to endure all things without any excitement or disturbance of mind. He who is everywhere, non-attached, neither joyously excited by encountering good nor disturbed by evil, has an established wisdom. The third and highest path. Lastly is the way of meditation. The metaphysical path. If while meditating you are still conscious of the breath, you are tied to body awareness. To enter cosmic consciousness, one must free himself from the bonds of the body through guru given meditation methods. If you put a sealed jar of water in a tank of water, that which is in the jar is separated from that which surrounds the jar. But if you remove the lid, the water in the jar and the water in the tank can mingle. Similarly, ordinary people shut out God because their consciousness is sealed in by the lid of ignorance. When that lid is removed by right methods of meditation, one feels the peace of God inside and outside the body. As you increase the length and depth of your meditations, you will find more and more peace and an ever new joy Whatever else you may try, it will not produce the divine consciousness that comes from meditation. The Lord is all around you. The Lord is all around, but you don't feel Him, and you cannot feel Him, within or without, until you remove the lid of ignorance and merge your consciousness with His. To discover Him within yourself. If you sink in material desire, you will suffocate. If you sink in the ocean of God, you will live forever more. Once you have found God, you experience real and lasting satisfaction. Human friendships may be severed, but God will never leave you. Though everyone else forsake you, if you have him, you have everything. Excerpts from the book Man's Eternal Quest by Paramahansa Yogananda